Okay, hello, hello. This is Michelle. This is my video uh, screen recording, which you can listen to and just look at the document if you want to. You don't have to um, watch the video unless it's helpful. Um, but I wanted to explain to you why I'm presenting you with these new, for some of you maybe new, not all of you, um, ideas about writing in early childhood and I'm going to try to break down some myths about writing in early childhood and that sort of thing and the big one that I want all of us to understand is that um, premature introduction of writing letters and writing names and all writing the alphabet has become problematic in later grades I'm hearing from elementary school teachers that children have not had enough finger play, finger exploration. I have second grade teachers telling me they're reintroducing Play-Doh and things of that nature because children are not experiencing them in early childhood. They're being fast forwarded through um, the process and not going through the stages of writing and drawing that are developmentally appropriate. So I'm going to make a real push, as I did with the reading, push for phonemic awareness. I want to push for finger awareness <laughs> in this um, particular unit of study that we're calling literacy and writing. So um, to start with that, I'm going to introduce you to something from Waldorf education called form drawing. This is used in the early grades, actually, in, in Waldorf school, not in the kindergarten. But I know in our preschool and early childhood classrooms, we are introducing the idea that children can make marks on paper on purpose that require them to hold an image in their mind, such as the letter M, right? You have to be able to picture that M to write it. If you have a card next to you that you're copying, you still have to be able to retain the image on the card long enough to look to your own paper that you're writing on and then back again to reference it. That's actually a really uh, sophisticated, complicated skill for the brain because it requires back and forth left to right hemispheres. It requires the eye movement to go one direction, then back to the other direction, then back and forth. And it also requires the brain to retain the image. And this is all being done with young children before their vision is actually fully developed. So eye movement and vision are not formed fully until around age six or seven. So I'm just saying. <laughs> so this is really important for us to understand. So what I'm going to have you do, you're going to need like scrap paper or something of that nature. If you have crayons, you would it would be great to have a yellow one and then a few other colors. Because you'll notice in some of these videos, um, form drawing is always started usually first having the children um, do it with their finger in the air. You won't see this in the videos. They do it with their finger in the air. They do it on one another's backs. So you feel somebody doing the form drawing on your back um, with their finger. Um, they do it in sand. They do it with water outside on the playground. Um, they do it with chalk on the playground outside. So these forms you see being drawn on paper, that's considered the very end of uh, introducing children to that form, so to speak. And children do form drawing and Waldorf education all the way through uh, high school. They get increasingly more complex and difficult as they go up the grades. You can research that and see all that online if you want to. However, for our purposes, I won't be able to have you go through all of that. I do want you to know about it though, because all of writing to, on paper, that particular part of learning a form or how to write a letter or whatever, that should be the last thing the child does. There should be a series of sensory activities 
that come before that, that lead up to, okay, now we're going to do this on paper. We've done it with water on the walls, by painting it on the walls with water. We've maybe even painted it at an easel. We've finger painted it. We've drawn it in the air. We've drawn it on each other's backs. Um, so, and we've had it drawn on our back. So we've done both. So we've had all these different sensory experiences. You can also walk these forms if you want to draw them on the, gr on the ground. Um, you can have children walk them also. The point being they've done several, at least two or three of these before you're asking them to put it on paper. Um, so what I can't have you do all that. <laughs> so uh, just go through each one of these. They're like two minutes long. I'll open one up so you can see. Um, okay. And you'll see this one's not even two minutes long. She's going to have you we in are this going one. to learn how to. Scribble. So this is scribbling now, which is actually a you know people to... really have problems with scribbling a lot of times. Sorry, I lost my page, um, and you know I, I so that's why I put it in there because scribbling is actually really important. Sometimes in my work with uh, helping private students who are struggling, I have to have them go back and scribble. Um, because they were not allowed to scribble. They were taught to color in the lines or draw sp specific things. And they never, they weren't given anything to make marks at the scribbling stage. That's also something that's happening. So this is actually super important to have scribble time in your classroom. Even if you teach kindergarten and first grade. Because most children now have not gone through that stage and it's really important. Then you'll see how there's a story used. Um, you'll see spiral, circle, and the foundation of form drawing actually is the straight line, curved line. Young children in Waldorf schools doing form drawings don't do anything else but straight line, curved line pages for a long time. And this allows them to build the foundation of every alphabet letter. Every alphabet letter has straight lines and curved lines in it. So, but we go right to the, the letter. <laughs> so um, I'm hoping this will be helpful. What I want you to turn in is just photographs of your own um, experiences. Uh, so no big deal. Just insert them here. Um, these are some waking up finger, fine motor finger plays. So if you're always already using finger plays a lot in your classroom, just share the ones you do. That would be great. If not, look at these. Give them a try yourself and report back how you felt about it. Um, this is something that has also gotten lost in early childhood are these little finger plays we used to do pretty routinely and even parents did them at home. They come from, you know, indigenous cultures where there were little, you know, play games that uh, mothers primarily did. Um, so a lot of this is ancestral wisdom. All of form drawing, by the way, is ancestral wisdom um, because these are all um, characteristic of things we see in very early in art on caves, the walls of caves and so on. I just always want to make sure I give credit where credit is due there. Um, here's an article from NACI about emergent writing that gives you even more information. This is a page with um, uh, this group, Fairy Dust Teaching, which is pretty great, actually. Um, she has a lot of free stuff on there, which I love. I love looking at the photographs of stuff that people do. Um, look at her writing center there and look at all the photographs and just make a list of the components you see there that should be in any early childhood writing center. Make really, you know, really pay attention. There's some very good, important pieces in there to, you know, uh, emulate if you're not already doing them or, you know, when you have your own classroom, just make sure you have this list. <laughs> um, Last but not least is a very short, 
um, another, these are short articles, they're not long. Um, but this is about Sylvia Ashton Warner, who is another icon of early childhood in my courses. I always try to introduce, introduce as many of these people as possible to you, because I don't know if you're learning about them. Um, so in reading, you know, I introduce you to Marion Wright Edelman, who every early childhood person should know. Um, Sylvia Ashton Warner is someone who worked in New Zealand and was phenomenal. Her book, Teacher, is a Bible for, um, well, I shouldn't say Bible if you're not Christian, <laughs> but it's, it's an iconic work. I'll say that. Sorry. Um, and it, I have my first experience teaching kindergarten, um, the kindergarten teacher who I was replacing, this was, oh my gosh, at least almost 40 years ago now, she handed me this book by Sylvia Ashton Warner and said, you'll never need another book to teach kindergarten. And I actually found that to be true. Um, so if you can find the book, I highly recommend it. Um, it's an easy read, but a wonderful read. Um, her relationship to the Maori people in New Zealand, the indigenous people from New Zealand, is very interesting. Um, in many ways, she turned her back on the colonizers, the British who came in and, and um, took the Maori people's uh, land. So it's very interesting to also think about that now um, as we're starting to understand more and more. And note that now in New Zealand, their current work in early childhood is heavily, if not completely based in the relationship the Maori people have to their children. That's something you can learn more about if you want to, just ask me about it. I think I shared this with students who've had me in the past, you might remember that. So um, read this and just please make a list of everything you learn that you, are, you know are the components of a solid approach to writing and how words are shared. Um, and so that is your resources recording for this particular page.